Hi everyone, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. Now, this next molecule I'm going to show you has some disastrous effects associated with it because it is a chemical weapon. It's known as sarin. You've likely heard the name before, but probably never seen the structure. It's an unusual structure, and you're possibly looking at it already thinking, there's not a lot there that I actually cover in my A-level. And you're right, there isn't. But what I'm going to do first is just draw your attention to this phosphorus just here. Now, the phosphorus is actually bonded to one, two, three four different atoms or groups and so although it might not seem like something you do in the A-level technically this phosphorus is a chiral center now obviously if this ever did come up in the exam they would point this out to you as you've not come across a phosphorus example of this and nor should you because remember it's only the carbon ones that are spec this is absolutely non-spec but let's just have a look at how this could apply to stuff we've done in the second year of the course now, since it's a chiral center, that means it's going to demonstrate a type of stereoisomerism called optical isomerism. Which means it's going to have a non-superimposable mirror image of itself. Now, sometimes what that means is, when we do a reaction, we get a 50-50 mixture of each of the optical isomers. Sometimes we have to think about the consequences of this. So we all know and have studied the example of thalidomide. And we know that the optical isomer of thalidomide had some disastrous effects. It was a morning sickness drug and it caused for these mutations, these genetic defects to form in the unborn child of, of someone who was pregnant taking it as a morning sickness release drug. Now, obviously, that meant that one of these isomers was good for its purpose and the other was bad against that purpose and it had disastrous consequences. So one of the big things in pharmaceutical research is to make sure if there is an optical isomer to check to see if it has a different effect. But I suppose the question would be here, why are we not bothered for sarin if the optical isomer has a disastrous effect? And the rather morbid answer to that is because it's a chemical weapon. If it has a disastrous effect, then surely that's an added bonus to someone who would be using this for some sort of horrible purpose. So although sometimes we have to consider the optical isomer of something and how it can have alternative effects, it isn't always necessarily going to be something that's brought up in the synthetic route. Here, we wouldn't care less if it has a disastrous effect. You would just make it as it is. Another example of something that's far less dangerous is ibuprofen. So the alternative um, optical isomer for ibuprofen just doesn't have the same effect as the um, optical isomer which can help uh, sort of relieve pain. It's not anything dangerous, and so when you're synthesizing, we don't have to separate them out. It's entirely the choice of the manufacturer. I hope that kind of puts it into a new context for you and shows you how we can have chiral centers in other parts of chemistry. You would encounter this kind of chiral center in a chemistry degree, perhaps. Until then, happy revising. 